Chapter six of the Blowout Sax book. My name is Mark Archer and we're gonna do very bottom notes on the saxophone. Now, the reason we haven't done these before is because we've got 24 of the 33 notes already sussed and they're the notes that you'll be playing an awful lot when you're playing the sax, so take your time with these. Now, these bottom notes, if they don't come out as I explained them, get your saxophone checked out. A lot of time, the saxophones can leak at the bottom and make these bottom notes really hard to play. Now, the first note we're gonna play of these bottom notes is bottom C. Bottom C is the pivotal note to get in um, all the other notes of the petal keys that we're gonna be playing. Now the deal with bottom C is to blow it as though you just run up and down some stairs a few times and you literally have no breath. So you're literally breathing into this instrument. You push from your stomach, you slow the air down, you relax your bottom lip and you actually think really, really low. Okay, so it's minimal air. Okay, bottom C is all six fingers on. And we did it way back in the naturals, right at the beginning. Bottom C, that one there. Only should be played with the thumb off. Never play with the thumb on, always play with the thumb off. You play with the thumb on, it sometimes goes schizo and plays a C, and sometimes it plays a G. So we're just gonna keep it exclusive for now as bottom C. Okay, so play bottom C, slow the air down, think low, and literally purr the note out, okay? Breathing into the instrument rather than blowing almost. Okay, almost relax the two front teeth, makes your head go a little bit ratty when you play as well. Lovely note, lovely warm, rich note by the by design of the sax that all the notes down there sound absolutely massive. And we're going to try and ape those later in what we call an overtone exercise. But the bottom C is a lovely, lovely note, gorgeous note. You always have to play it pretty, you can always honk it out. And if you're not getting anything out of it at all, if you're not getting anything out of it at all, just go down the mouthpiece piece a little bit from your natural sweet spot and just honk the note out just to get the note in your head. But ultimately, you want to try and purr it down, play it beautifully and softly as possible. Okay, now we're gonna go back to our very first tune, Cap Town Races, and we're gonna play the tune again where we played it up an octave with the thumb on. We're gonna play it low, um, and we're gonna play it sort of um, Blazing Saddle style, sort of cowboy style. Okay, now, this time you can really hit the bottom C quite hard. Okay, so if we just run through a, a quick verse of this. <laughs> Just kind of hit it, and again, slow the air down as you hit it, but you can up honk it if you want. Okay, so that's bottom C. That's the crucial note to get, which like I say, is gonna lead everything else. So what we're gonna do now is we've done um, that particular one. We can, again, you can do that with some music. So um, if we could play it with some music. Camp Town, town rate is first verse high, second verse low, okay? And uh, as you can hear, I played it along with myself, then there was a lovely rip at the end. Try not to do that yet, but at some point do do it. So you're seeing fog on leg on literally as you're hearing that. Okay, now the next tune we're gonna do in bottom C is uh, Pop Goes the Weasel. Pop Goes the Weasel is one of my favorite tunes. I used to play it to my kids all the time. Uh, nursery rhymes are great to play to kids because they get them involved in the sax and you get the kids on side with learning on the sax, always a good idea. It's also from one of my favorite films, Rage in Harlem, uh, which is a Pop Goes the Weasel and then something not quite nice happened, but great film. Um, also, um, a lot of these nursery rhymes are used by saxophonists when they're improvising and jamming. They'll put a little tune in like this, just put a little snatch of a nursery rhyme in, and you're thinking, they're playing a nursery rhyme, or they're playing a nursery rhyme. So, in this particular case, with Pop Goes the Weasel, uh, one of my great saxophone heroes, Tommy McCook, from my book Kings of Jamaican Sax, puts it in a song called uh, The Gorgons of Dub and Horn, and suddenly you hear a bit of Pop Goes the Weasel in the middle of the song, so that's fantastic. So, remember these little snatches of, so, of, of tunes for later and, and put them in your playing. Okay, so we're gonna play a, a quick, um, the next tune we're gonna play um, is uh, Pop Goes the Weasel, okay? Now this time for your bottom C, you can give it a little bit more snap, you can give it a little bit more bite if you wanna sort of honk it out a bit. So the bottom C can be more of a, so you get a bit more of a bite on it. 
Try to get it under your fingers, about 99% there, getting them under my fingers, uh, but actually thinking, never think when you think you know a tune, just play it and let it go under your fingers. So, pop those away, so you can really honk that. The other thing I forgot to say is there's also a grace note in the middle. So you go from the C sharp to the D. Okay, so that's pop goes the weasel. So that's another use of bottom C, and then the third uh, tune we're going to play exclusively in bottom C is one of the greatest tunes of all time, which was, uh, which is uh, What a Wonderful World, sung by the legendary and the late great and the greatest Louis Armstrong. Um, the loveliest thing about this tune, again, is you've got to land on bottom C from time to time. So again, as you land on bottom C, try, kind of take the air out of the instrument if you can as well, okay? Uh, beautiful tune to play, get your vibrato going. Remember to cover B flat early when you're going to land on it from bottom C to B flat. Um, you've got little fingers involved, okay? So it's going to use a lot of the different notes that we've done recently in playing the sax. The most amazing thing about this tune is that it, um, it was almost never recorded. Lewis had just had a hit with Hello Dolly. The um, main man of the Capitol Records walked in, heard it, said, it's one of the worst songs I've ever heard. Please stop recording it now. I think words a bit harsher than that. Um, they ignored him because the guy who wrote it was also producing it under a pseudonym. Of course it went to number one uh, in Britain in 68, straight after they recorded it. And years later in Good Morning Vietnam, um, thanks to, uh, again, the late great uh, Robin Williams film. So let's play this. Again, you can play this at your own tempo. This is just a tune to get something under your fingers, get the fingering under your fingers, You're not playing along with anything. And again, just play, one of the, play this tune. It's a gorgeous tune to play. Okay, so you can use all the forms of articulation and that, you can make it as personal as you like. One of the loveliest tunes of all time, lovely lyrics, and as a saxophonist, remember you're a singer. So personalise it as much as possible, think about the song as you're playing it. Uh, what a wonderful world, one of the loveliest saxophone tunes. One of the tunes, loveliest tunes of all time, but also sounds lovely on our beloved saxophone. So go and enjoy that. If you want a copy of the chart, go to uh, blowoutsax.com and, um, 
and uh, there'll be a copy of the chart there for you. So enjoy playing that, and that's bottom C on the saxophone from chapter six in my teaching book. <laughs>